Right, I'm gonna talk about a stock today, believe it or not. This stock has got huge analyst upside potential and it also provides a pretty healthy dividend yield. So we've got the best of both worlds there. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new to the channel, please consider heading down and subscribing to the channel because you'll get plenty more content like this and you won't miss out on any of it. And while you're down there, give it a little like as well. Or of course, wait until you've enjoyed the video, absorbed all the content and then give it a like if you genuinely like it. And while you're down there as well or throughout the video, don't forget to drop a comment on your thoughts on this particular stock. It's an interesting one and it combines both growth, I guess, and dividends but we might have a little drawback to it as well and i'll go through all of that in this video i've gone for a slightly different angle setup today let me know if you prefer the old one or if you like this new one or if you simply don't care then don't let me know there's no need really going on to the stock itself it is a tds ticker symbol tds and it's telephone and data systems they've been around for a very long time it's not a gross stock in terms of penny growth stock with huge 200 500,000 percent increases but it's a stock that analysts and certainly two analysts on the website tip ranks are predicting an average of 54 percent upside so we'll have a look at that as well but don't just jump in there are some downsides to this stock as well which i will go through in there in fact let's just go in and do it now Right, although we're not starting in the portfolio as such, we kind of are, you can see kind of the, the data up there, uh, but we're starting in TDS and what it's been up to over the last year, couple of years. So we're gonna have a look at here, the, the stock has quite consistently over the course of probably a year or so, has been up between the 30 to 35, up to as high as nearly $37 a share. Um, but it's typically between kind of that 25 and 30, and then it's had a pretty miserable H2 last half of 2019. Then of course, 2020, we had quite a big sell-off, quite a big dip. I can't imagine what that was for or why. I'm sure you all know better than I do. I'm sure you all know. We had some pretty good recovery actually up till about August last year. Then we had another dip. It's been pretty volatile the whole way, the whole way through in the last few years. And we're now running at just under $20. So that's an overview of what's happened in the last couple of years, I guess, for the stock. Market's closed, so you can't see any movement there anyway. So let's start with the good stuff. So let's go into tip ranks first of all, start with the good stuff. We've got two buy ratings and one hold. It's considered a moderate buy on tip ranks. As always, be very careful how you type that into Google because you may end up with a completely different type of website for better or for worse. And we've got a 12 month forecast here with analysts predicting an average of $30.83, a high of $38.50, which is a massive growth from your 19 or nearly $20 that we're at now, 100%. So we've got a 54.54% upside from these analysts. So they really believe it should be back up to these 30s, between 30s and say $38 mark, where it has been for the vast majority of 2019, I think it was. And even at the low, we've got 22, which is still an upside and increase of around 10% anyway, which is not to be sniffed at. So not only have we got some fantastic upside on this stock with moderate buy, two analysts giving it a buy and potentially a 54.5% upside, potentially more, potentially less, always a risk. What we've also got in terms of it being a dividend stock as well as a growth stock, so we've got kind of the best of both worlds here, We've got, let's go for the basics. So we've got a 2.28 billion market cap. Uh, we've got a forward yield of 3.51, which, which is a pretty reasonable yield. We've got a PE ratio of 18.09, which isn't too bad at all. Anything under 20 would probably be considered reasonable value. And on that, if we go into the dividends, we've got a payout ratio of 63.46. That's kind of sitting on the sweet spot, I guess. Just to give you an idea of what that means, that means that in terms of their profits, they're paying out 63.46% of their profits to their shareholders in disbursements, dividends, which means that the remaining profit, my maths isn't quick enough to work out what percentage that is, can be plowed straight back into the company for future growth, development, R&D, uh, innovation, and, and just investment back into the company to help growth and to aid growth. 
we have a five year growth rate of 3.71%. And this is quite an interesting bit. They've been growing their dividends for 46 years. We are an aristocrat and we are four years away from becoming a dividend king. That makes it incredibly attractive to dividend investors. That makes it incredibly attractive to income investors like myself, although I typically I'm a bit of a yield chaser and I'm looking for higher yields than that. But for people that are investors that want a safe dividend that will be consistent, 46, 46 years worth of growth is pretty, pretty good. And it's a reasonable yield. They pay it quarterly. That's probably all you need to know in terms of the dividends. Now, I was going to go through the website, which is here, but it was incredibly boring, so I'm not going to bother. Telephone and Data Systems is a Fortune 1000 company that provides wireless products and services, cable and wireline broadband. TV and voice services and hosted and managed services to approximately 6 million customers well nationwide. Okay, boring. You don't need to know anything more than that, but take a look at the website if you want to have a look at that. This is the drawback. I'm going to go through the drawback of the company. There's quite a few articles on Seeking Alpha basically warning people against. Now, although we've got these analysts giving it a buy and a huge upside we've got a complete contradiction on seeking alpha in terms of the authors on seeking alpha and, and their opinions so i'll go through kind of the basics but i encourage you to head on to to seeking alpha and read these where they talk initially about how good the dividend is however the company has a remarkably volatile performance record due to intense competition in its business which is completely true bloody 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 blah we head down to the good bit so it does give you some some good information here as well so we've got here in the third quarter so it grew its earnings per share from 15 cents in last year's quarter to 66 cents and thus it exceeded the analyst consensus by an impressive 45 cents tds has exhibited a strong business performance this year and hence it is on track to grow its earnings per share 39 percent this year this is all very good so far it's worth noting that earnings per share of one dollar and three cents in 2019 were 21 lower than its earnings per share of $1.31 in 2010. So here we start looking at the drawbacks, I guess, and how certainly in the last decade, it's not had a great deal of growth. So if people are buying this, typically they are gonna look to buy into this company solely for income. You, you would imagine based on this article here, but obviously again, we've got this tip ranks article giving it a huge upside so there's huge contradiction in this company i'll let you decide which way you want to go with it this article by the way i will just quickly say came out in december last year so we have had two uh, bit months worth of uh, worth of business so things could have changed in that time but this is an article that came out and things don't typically change in a couple of months anyway the, with a company uh, sort of the, of this size it's not a penny stock so it goes on a volatile performance record is of great importance and hence it should not be ignored by investors one of the primary investing criteria of Warren Buffett has always been a consistent growth rate. So we're talking about one of the best investors that's ever lived and he wants a consistent growth rate. This company has not provided that. So on that basis, this is a company that Warren Buffett probably would not look to invest in. Now, if you want to mirror some world-renowned investors and you want to mirror and mimic their investing, you won't be investing in this company based on that. But again, if you're someone who just looks at things like tip ranks, then you would probably invest because you're looking at the upside and you rely on those, those analysts. It goes on. Three major competitors, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile control over 90% of the total US wireless market, and hence they have the power to exert great pricing pressure on TDS, and that's absolutely true. So the bigger companies, um, when they've got a bit of a, not a monopoly as such, but when they've got the vast majority of the market, they can almost control and manipulate prices in a way, or they can certainly undercut the smaller companies like TDS, and that's something to bear in mind as well. TDS has an exceptional dividend growth record. We know that, I did, I did, ah, it goes on down here. However, even income oriented investors should not base their investing decisions solely on the dividend yield of a stock. That's very important. And we all kind of know that anyway, or hopefully you know that. The absence of a consistent growth record is a material risk factor, which may cause a dividend cut or capital losses at some point in the future. I want to just make a note of this bit here. Uh, so listen up. The absence of consistent growth record is a material risk factor, which may cause a dividend cut or capital losses. Capital losses, maybe. A dividend cut, I don't think I do agree with that. If we have a look at here at Seeking Alpha, first of all, we've grown the dividend 46 years. 
So they're obviously doing something right. They know how to give back capital to their investors. They've been doing it for 46, 46 years. They've got no reason to, to do anything different. We've also got a payout ratio of 63.46%. Now that is on the sweet spot. That would suggest that they've got plenty of spare capital, plenty of spare profits to do one of two things. Continue to grow the company in the future, which therefore you'll get your capital growth from the, the share price. But also what they'll be able to do with that is start to look to pay down some of their debt. And I'll get onto the debt in a second because it's quite a serious point. So they can start paying down some of their debt. They can split that and do, do both ways. If we've got nearly, if we've got 36 and a half percent, roughly, 36.54%, is that right? Anyway, of profit left, left over, they could split that down the middle and go, I don't know, 17, 18% into growing the company and R&D and innovation and just investing back into the company. And they can do 18-ish percent in paying down the serious amounts of debt they've got or overpaying the debt they've got. But the debt is a, is a, is a serious point. But just on that point, I don't think, certainly from my point of view, talking about a dividend cut, I, I'm not sure I fully agree with that based on what I'm looking at here, but... As I said, you know, I could be wrong. You never know. So, but capital loss is always a, always a possibility. So, so going on to the the debt load we have here, our excessive debt load. Uh, so, net debt equals liabilities minus cash and receivables. That stands at three point nine billion. This amount is nearly twice as much as its current market cap of the stock, two point one, where we just looked it was a bit less than that, and approximately eighteen times the annual earnings of the company. Therefore, it is undoubtedly high. It goes on to say telecommunications companies tend to carry high loads of debt because of their infrastructure they need, but that is a very high amount of debt. So something just to bear in mind and something to take on board. If you look at someone like AT&T, which certainly more recently has been ridiculed for the amount of debt it's got, even though it's doing a fantastic job of paying that debt down and it's all very much, I would consider, in hand, that is something also to bear in mind and to consider with this company. So my final thoughts, I guess, look, we've got some seriously good analyst reports here of uh, an average of 54.5%, even if you halve that and you go 27%, would it be? Yep, even if you halve that and go conservative, we've still got a growth rate over the course of a year of 27%. Serious market beta there. We've got a 3.5% dividend yield with a decent payout ratio, and they have grown that for 46 years. So we've got a dividend growth stock here, dividend growth, as in they grow their dividends each year. We've got a reasonable dividend yield at 3.5%. We have very good analyst predictions on tip ranks, but we have a company that is also laden with debt. So bear all that in mind. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know where you would be with this company, whether you'd be investing, if you're a growth dividend investor, just a dividend investor, an income investor, uh, a value investor, because it would be a bit of a value play at this at this level if you take tip ranks into consideration, tip ranks into consideration. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're going to be getting into this company. Let me know what you are going to, what your thoughts are and whether I've got anything wrong, which I'm might have done but i'm just taking information i've got on screen here let me know if you're going to be buying into tds telephone and data systems so that's it good points and bad points uh let me know if you're going to be getting into this stock or what your thoughts are on this stock give us an alternative as well uh, are you looking at sort of verizon at&t and the major other tele communication companies as better buys at the moment tip ranks are predicting at&t have only got a seven eight percent upside so let us know who you kind of believe more they've had a bit of a choppy couple of years or few years uh, but we're seeing some predictions for some serious growth now so let me know what your thoughts are as, as well anything i've missed in the video do pull me up on it let me know what your thoughts are on on the company and uh, whether i've missed anything out always take on board your feedback and bits and pieces like that anyway that's that is the video do all the good stuff uh, subscribe to the channel like the video share it with a friend and comment and i guess i'll see you in the next video. See you later.